Hey YouTube, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Roy's Redneck Garage. And today, we got a couple packages in. Well, we got one package in. No, there was a couple packages. Uh, one was just chain links to uh, replace the, uh, the uh, master links that got destroyed during the uh, testing of the mini bike, um, which we figured out that problem uh, that was in the last video. And we got this in. Stupid camera. And this box right here. So. Always save your cardboard boxes. You never know when you need them to sit on, kneel on, um, painting, all that kind of stuff. So always save your cardboard. Here we go. And I don't have my knife on. Boy, they taped this thing up good. <laughs> I don't know what it says, but anytime you have tape with a smiley face on it written in Chinese, it can't be too bad. I don't know, maybe it's like fortune cookie tape or something. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Their tape has a smiley face on it. Emoji! Well, it's gonna have a little bit of, need some paint touch up on it. But there we are. One Honda CG125 fuel tank, brand new. So, uh, it came in as a little bent up damage there, but you know, I, I guess it came from China. So, we'll fix that right now. Have some paint touch up on that boy they really uh they really messed it up pretty bad there one of the other things we got in the mail recently um our new rear rim uh we've got an eight inch dtw and i put a brand new version of the tire that was on it on here the carlisle uh sport trail it's a it's a trailer tire but uh it, it's it's pretty cool looking it's got a drag tire kind of thing like the old 60s style flat motorcycle tires they used to be uh, kind of more flatter and now they're all round and well, you see what the new tires look like they're like three treads in a whole damn tire but uh, this one's actually got some tread to it um that's the tire it's on it already just it's on mounted on a steel trailer rim which was bent and i took this to work and i put it in the milling machine i 45 it off of these uh the original four small holes here that came in or 5 16 holes and I drilled it, actually drilled them 9 16 um, to go over the studs because they're half inch, they're half, what is that, it's half 24 threads or something like that on the uh, hub. But uh, we went 9 16 uh, because I actually machined an eccentric on the hub. So the rim actually centers on the eccentric and there's really no need for that. And I got flat washers and just put regular lock bolts on them and call it a day. But, uh, yeah, so here's our new rear rim for the uh, mini bike, and uh, I tell you, it's a hell of a lot lighter. Damn, does that thing look cool, huh? These will probably also end up being the golf cart tires. I'll probably end up putting four of these on for the golf cart, or golf cart, I'm sorry, for the go-kart. All right, now, so here we go. Here's our hub here. And here is the little eccentric, well, right here, the little eccentric that I machined onto it um, because it's welded here. I just, there was enough weld here, I was able to cut it down and just put a little bit of an eccentric on there. I didn't have to take off much. Um, it's still got a pretty damn good hefty weld on it. It's, it's, it's strong enough for what it is. I mean, it's a mini bike, it's just hauling my fat butt around. But, um, and we were machined the face of it here. You see all nice new machine work on it. 
Um, so basically this whole hub has been, it's been shortened an inch. It's been, the, the holes are reboard for the bearings. And then I made this because this basically had a floating axle in it. If you tighten the nuts down, well, it crimp the bearings and the wheel wouldn't spin. Well, reason was, I don't know if it ever had one, but one of these. This is a spacer for inside the wheel. I put these, made these little, machine these little Teflon rings to go on it. It fits, here we go, inside the hub. Now when you tighten the bolts down, tighten the rear swing arm and tighten the bolts all the way across, the pressure between the two bearings is held on here. There's only 10 thousandths clearance on this. So when I tighten it down, there's still like basically 10 thousandths play on the hub, but it will spin perfectly true and I'll actually be able to put a little smoke on that bolt and make sure it doesn't you know it's actually kind of part of the strength of the rear swing arm the way I designed it is this has to be bolted solid it boxes the whole swing arm and uh, makes it nice and sturdy and stiff because this swing arm actually has bronze bushings in it there is no play okay when you hit a bump you feel it there's no cushion there's no rubber bushings to soften the ride it's hard it's harsh and, and, and the shocks suck too. All right, so we have that. We have our brake hub. I uh, took the um, cap head screws that were out of it and put these butt head screws in. Uh, better luck, a little bit more, uh, and, and, and the, old, the cap heads were actually hitting the uh, swing arm a little bit because this, when this is mounted, there's I don't know, maybe 10 sheets of paper, you get in between this and the swing arm. All my tolerances are right on the money. They are, there's very little clearance for anything. So this is the hub, two bolts, it actually clamps onto that rear hub. It's the only way we were able to add a disc brake to it because this had the original drag brakes on it. <clears throat> you know, the metal plate that rubs against the tires like they had in the go-karts in the 70s, which didn't stop you at all. They were, they were pretty bad, let's put it that way. Now I can lock the rear tire up. So, but this goes on here, like this, and that makes my disc brake assembly on the hub. So we bolt our wheel back on here, and the nuts and bolts are in my pocket, and the washers, because we're basically, these are cone style nuts, we're just going to turn them around backwards, and I have these stainless steel washers to back them up, one, so we don't damage the rim, two, because like I said, it, it centers on the eccentric, there's no play in it, back and forth, there's, it's, it's right there, that's it, nothing, so, Drop our four stainless steel washers on. Run our bolts up. I know it's getting dark out here, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for that. We are. Uh, was running around all day after work. Got done at 2.30 today. We get done at 2.30 on Fridays. So I work four 10 hour days. Also while we were at work today, our new brake lever. I had to cut it and modify it. I didn't finish grinding off the welds and stuff like that, but now it works because we raised the pegs up. I didn't show you guys that either. I had to modify the pegs because I couldn't turn without the pegs dragging the ground. So I made these special pieces out of steel and raised the pegs up about an inch and a half. Well, about two inches. I raised them about two inches and got clearance for turning and stuff like that. They're still pretty low to the ground and it's still kind of hairy turning, but this wasn't meant to be a crotch rocket. It was meant to be a cruiser. Uh, basically meant to go fast in a straight line. So, all right, brakes rim, gas tank, got our final mods for the bike, and uh, all they left to do is make a seat, and uh, it's ready for paint.
we still have a clearance issue with our brake rotor, our brake caliper. As I said, it is, oh, that's turned. Well, as I said, it's very tight clearance issues on here. Um, scratching up our paint to death, but uh, yeah, we have a we have some small, slight clearance issues, but uh, we will we will correct those very soon. Um, so we have to rework that caliper for clearance. That's an easy fix. This still has to come apart for paint, so let's hope that clearance is it. Now let's reinstall our our new uh, brake lever here. Kind of funky looking, but uh, serves the purpose. Put our bolt through our custom made brake pull lever. but our brakes do work. There's a very unhappy puppy out there. Yeah, I hear that. We have a new puppy. She's in the house whining because we're not with her. Later on we'll finish welding those foot pegs on, but for right now they are pretty damn sturdy. They've got eight or nine tack welds on them. So, good enough for right now. We still have to nip this end off and do a little grinding on there. But, I'm satisfied with that. We got brakes. We got an aluminum rear wheel which shaved 50, about 15 pounds off this thing. I can still pick it up, so we're still good. All right. What next? Well, why don't we, why don't we mount the gas tank? Then I can see what I have to cut and move to make the seat fit. Because the seat's just roughed out, it's not the final seat. Um, the seat is going to have to match up with the, um, with this gas tank. So, let's do that. Let's get our new gas tank up here. Alright, so this gas tank is merely just held on with two bolts and a couple tack welds for testing. So we're going to take this off now. Put that fuel in the new gas tank once we get it mounted up here. Run some new fuel line. What's next? Grind off the welts. Gas the old gas tanks off, original gas tanks off. We uh, sand that down a bit. Our mounts are still here for our gas tank. I left them on. I didn't take them off. Two plastic cups. 
fingers crossed that the 185 gas tank mounts will allow this to mount to it too. Try not to scratch the tank. How about that? Oh, bit of a clearance issue there. And our gas tank is way, way high for this to mount properly. Here's the weld bung fitting we made for mounting this tank at work today. And I got some rubber bushings to fill this bungled up hole here. And uh, hopefully everything will work. Another 560. Well, for right now, it looks like we're at a standstill with this gas tank. Um, several issues. Um, I like the positioning of it, but the front forks hit it. I do want to put a set of um, the good pit bike shocks on the front of the inverted forks and, uh, and go with a 12-inch front wheel with a disc brake. Um, you can buy a kit off of eBay that uh, comes with everything you need and I already actually have the tube at work the uh, you know the front uh, fork tube that welds to the frame that everything bolts to I have it pre-made at work um, I've been into and in, in, yeah. <laughs> I've been in anticipation of doing this for a while hey YouTube how you doing it's uh been a while since I've been able to do some videos and stuff. It's been really hectic and busy around here. Um, DJing weddings and, and things like that. Um, so we are finally out in the garage again and working on the mini bike. I uh, got the new header tube. I got the new one of those. I got the new fork, uh, triple trees. I don't have the forks yet, but I got enough that I can cut this off now and get the those tack welded on here at least and uh, then I can fit my gas tank. Now with what the new triple new uh, head tube and the triple trees do is actually stretch the bike another four inches. So yeah we're going much longer with this. Uh, I'm 6'2 so and all these mini bikes are great and fun to ride but when you're 6'2 they're kind of hard to Kind of hard to ride when you're 6'2". Your knees hit the handlebars, you're kind of tucked up on the thing. And if you're riding for a long time and stuff like that, hey, it's not too comfortable. So, that being said, we say we cut this tube off and stretch this thing a little farther. All right, so, here's the triple trees. As you see, nice and new. Um, it's kind of hard to see, the light in here sucks. I tried putting the LED up there and though it's bright it doesn't cast the light it just kind of shoots straight down which is why we moved everything up to the front of the garage here which I yes am still trying to get cleaned out as you can see we're getting a little more stretch out of it um, from its first position it's somewhere around three to four inches of stretch so um, so that should work, okay? Well, I'm glad to finally be getting rid of this uh, mini bike setup here. It's worn out, it's hokey, it rattles around, and at 45, 50 miles an hour, it makes for a scary, scary ride. I mean, it's, it's, this thing's just, it's just worn out. It's, it's not even useful anymore. Um, I love these Manco Thunderbirds, but uh, if you're taking them faster than their stock speed, which is I think around 20 miles an hour, it's hairy. It's not. A, it's it's a very scary, scary ride. So.
I can went from not seeing my breath to now seeing my breath. <laughs> Well, there we go. We have got that cut free. A quick test fit, see what we can And, uh, all right, that's gonna work out just fine. Gonna do a little uh, finagling here to get it to fit right. Some grinding. But the way I designed it, I designed it so when I put it on here, it literally is self-centering with this back here and stuff. Not to mention it follows the curves and it, it just, it looks awesome. That just looks awesome right there. Um, I gotta get my phone and get some pictures of this. Oh, with a little persuasion. persuasion it sets right down on there I didn't bring my angle gauge but right now we're looking probably somewhere around between well let's say between 33 and 37 degrees of rake if it falls in there wherever it falls in there I'm, I'm fine with um, when it's sitting on the ground it, it looks like 37 degrees but once it's sitting on the ground it's not going to be as much rake as going to be more.